Hello, God bless you. My name is Steve, and I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship. We're located in the Coney Island section of Brooklyn, New York, and it's time for today's daily devotion. If you are new here, our daily devotion is where we take a chapter from the Bible, and we just read it together. And the goal, the idea, the purpose is to include some of God's Word in our daily routine. Uh, we believe that that's really important to do. And uh, as we seek to follow Jesus, for those of us who do seek to follow Jesus, um, that's an important and necessary step in order to do that in our own personal discipleship. We uh, are reading through the New Testament at this time, a chapter at a time in order, and each of these videos covers one chapter from the Bible. We started with the book of Matthew, and today we are starting the book of John, also called the Gospel of John, also called the Gospel according to St. John. Um, these are all different names for the, for the same book, and John is the fourth of the four Gospels. And so we'll talk just a little bit about what makes John's Gospel unique by way of introduction to this biblical book as we, as we start a new book today. We post these videos five days a week, but you can access them at any time. And the way they're organized is each playlist is a book of the Bible. And again, each video in that playlist is a chapter from that book. And so you can go look, you'll see a playlist that covers all of Matthew, a playlist that covers all of Mark, all of Luke. And now we're getting started on the Gospel of John. So thanks so much for joining us and uh, hope it blesses you. Hope it's just an effective tool to help you include a little bit of God's Word in your day today. And uh, if you know someone else who might benefit, might be blessed, or might be interested, please don't hesitate to share these because that's, we, that's why we're doing this. It takes a little bit of work to, to create these videos, but it's worthwhile um, as long as people, as long as it's helping people, as long as it's blessing people and exposing people to the Scriptures. So John's Gospel, uh, as I said, there are four Gospels, and Gospel just means good news. And the four Gospels in the New Testament tell the story about the life and ministry of Jesus. And the Gospels come first in the New Testament. And so the first book of the New Testament is Matthew, then Mark, then Luke, and then John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are what we call the synoptic Gospels. And that word synoptic sounds a lot like the word synonym. And a synonym, or, or a pair of synonyms, or a group of synonyms, are words that have the same meaning. And the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are all very similar. There are a few uh, unique characteristics between them, but by and large, they cover the same events and in relatively uh, similar order. And I have some opinions on why that is. You know, Scripture teaches that uh, a testimony needs three witnesses to really have validity. And what we have in these three Gospels are the testimony of three witnesses. And again, they're, they're very, very similar. Most scholars believe that Mark, the Gospel of Mark, was written first. In that the uh, Gospels of Matthew and the Gospels of Luke were based upon Mark's Gospel. And I, I, I think that that's probably true. There are also um, a lot of theories about another common source that we no longer have. Uh, if, if it did exist, it's been lost. Um, not that it was a biblical book, but a historical account. And researchers will call that Q, the letter Q. Um, <clears throat> there seems to be some evidence of, of, of that, but uh, I don't want to digress too much. It's likely that Mark was written first, Matthew and Luke from their own accounts, in their own perspective, confirm and validate that testimony 
we've got three witnesses all saying the same thing. And so it gives credibility to the gospel. John writes his gospel much later. Uh, John writes his gospel um, as late as the 90s AD, or what we would today, scholars today would say CE. And John just writes, his, his gospel is just structured differently. And there's a couple of things I want to point out that I think are important to understand as we start John's gospel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke primarily write a chronological history. In other words, they write about the history and the significance, but they were, they're writing about the events more or less in the order that they happened. First, Jesus did this, and then he did that, and then he did that, and then this happened. And they're, and they're writing in that, in that order, that sequence. Um, again, they all have their different uh, flavor, where one begins with a genealogy and establishes the historical, uh, not only the historical lineage of Jesus, but how his family tree fulfills prophecy. Uh, one begins with Jesus calling the disciples, and so they're 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 coming from different places, but but again, the same historical narrative. John doesn't begin that way at all. And his entire gospel is just structured differently. And I believe that where Matthew, Mark, and Luke are writing to preserve the historical narrative, John, since that work had already been done, there just didn't seem to be a need for a fourth account along the same lines. And of course, all of this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I think what God was doing through John's gospel is saying, okay, we have the historical record. Now let's talk about the theology of Jesus. Now let's talk about um, who He is relative to the Trinity. And that's, that's where John's gospel begins and stays. We're going to see in John chapter 1 that John begins by establishing Jesus' deity before there was time. And John, about half of John's gospel takes place, about half the book takes place during a single week of Jesus' life. So he's just drilling down and giving deeper attention to certain things. And he's teaching about who Jesus is while he teaches about what Jesus did, of course. But, but he's doing a deeper dive on who Jesus is, where the other three Gospels focus more on what Jesus did and who he encountered. Um, also, I think this is important to understand. If you compare the Gospels, the four Gospels, you'll find that John tells some of the stories. <clears throat> there are things that the other three Gospels include that John doesn't, just because he's spending more time focusing on fewer events. You'll find that, um, that there are things that, that, that John gives a great deal of time to that the, that the other Gospels do not. But you'll also find that John will tell some of the stories out of order. Some of the stories that we find in the other Gospels, John tells them out of order. And that's not a contradiction. It's not a mistake. It's not an error. John's not writing a historical timeline. He's not saying, first this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Uh, for example, the clearing of the temple. That happened during the Passion Week which is the last week of Jesus' life. That's at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. And therefore, because the other three Gospels are chronological, it comes toward the end of those Gospels. Um, John tells that story up front. The very early pages of, the, of his Gospel account. So it seems like he's off by about three years, but he's not. What John is doing in, with that story and all the other stories that he tells is he's, he's citing examples to teach us about the theology of Jesus, not to tell us what order things happened in. 
So where the other three Gospels might say, and then Jesus came into Jerusalem and He found them cheapening the temple and turn, have, they've turned it into a marketplace and He was indignant with righteous anger and He drove them out. John's not doing that. John is saying, let me tell you about who Jesus is. Jesus existed before there was time. And everything that there has ever been was created through Him. And then He came to the world that He created. But the world that He created didn't recognize Him and they rejected Him. But for those who would accept Him, He gave them the opportunity to become children of God once more. Jesus is uh, eternal. Jesus is Himself God. And you know what? Let me tell you a story uh, that supports how... Um, Jesus' heart for His Father and His kingdom. Once when Jesus went into the temple, He saw them cheapening the temple and, and changing money and uh, you know behaving as though it were a common marketplace. And so He drove those vendors out. See, John is telling that same story to make a point, not to make a, um, a timeline. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I want to stop there and get into John chapter 1 because this is going to be a bit of a longer uh, video. We like these to be about 8 to 10 minutes. Uh, this one will be north of that, of course, but I do want us to have that little bit of a foundation as we read uh, John together. John chapter 1 is 51 verses, and it begins this way, and it begins with a very um, well-known and very important uh, prologue that introduces us to uh, the eternal history of Jesus, not just the earthly history of Jesus. John chapter 1 verse 1 says this, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the be beginning with God and he create, God created everything through Him. Nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and this life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came to the very world He created, but the world didn't recognize Him. He came to His own people, and even they rejected Him. But to all who believed Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made His home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds, This is the one I was talking about when I said, Someone is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. From his abundance we've all received one gracious blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses, but God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders sent priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, Who are you? He came right out and said, I'm not the Messiah. Well, then who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No. Are you the prophet we're expecting? No. Then who are you? We need an answer for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I'm a voice shouting in the wilderness. Clear the way for the Lord's coming. Then the Pharisees who had been sent asked him, If you're not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? John told them, I baptize with water. But right here in the crowd is someone you do not recognize. Though his ministry follows mine, I'm not even worthy to be a slave and untie the straps of his sandal. This encounter took place in Bethany, an area east of the Jordan River where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, 
the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I was talking about when I said, A man is coming after me who is far greater than I am, for he existed long before me. I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I've been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descend like a dove from heaven and rest upon him. I didn't know he was the one, but when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me the one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen to Jesus, so I testify that he is the chosen one of God. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples, and as Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, Look, there's the Lamb of God. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying, and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, We found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you'll be called Caiaphas, uh, excuse me, Cephas, which is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Come and follow me. Philip was, for, was from Bethsaida, Andrew and Peter's hometown. Philip went to look for Nathanael and told him, We found the very per person Moses and the prophets wrote about. His name is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nazareth, exclaimed Nathanael. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Come and see for yourself, Philip replied. As they approached, Jesus said, Now here's a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. How do you know about me, Nathanael asked. And Jesus replied, I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. Then Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this just because I told you I had seen you under the fig tree? You'll see greater things than this. And then he said, I tell you the truth. You'll see all heaven open and the angels of God going up and down on the Son of Man, the one who is a stairway between heaven and earth. That's the end of John chapter 1. Um, I will not offer any uh, additional commentary uh, in this video just because it's already very long with, with our introduction to the book of, of John. Perhaps in a following video, uh, I'll talk just a little bit about why the proper noun word is used in chapter 1 where it says Jesus is the word with a capital W. Because um, I think that's important to understand as well. But uh, that's enough for now. Thanks so much for participating in this video. I hope you've been blessed by John chapter 1. And I hope you join us again next time for John chapter 2. God bless you.